Hi guys, my name is Anujindal. Welcome to Morning Tales for 27th July 2019. <clears throat> so today we are going to discuss a total of 10 MCQs as promised and as demanded by a lot of students. I am slowly and gradually increasing the number of questions that we can pick up on a daily basis from Morning Tales. So today we are going to have a total of 10 questions over a period of time. We will have a mixture of uh, both current affairs as well as static questions so it's at least it's going to be a good mixture of both these kinds of questions so stick around watch the entire video it's going to be a good dose for you uh, to start your morning okay uh, the first question i believe very important one can be asked in the examination very high chances the question is which country has recently launched hyperbola one the first private rocket of the nation. The name of the nation is China. So China has uh, launched Hyperbola 1. But the name of the private company is also important. The name of the private company is iSpace. iSpace. This is not to be confused with US's private agency SpaceX, which is owned by Elon Musk. And iSpace is a Chinese uh, private company which has launched its first private rocket of the nation okay so the answer to this nation would be china let's come to the second question for today the question is what is the name of the new aggregator model industry being set up to help businesses and individuals share their digital financial data with third parties in a safe and secure manner now this is something that is important not only for phase 1 when you are talking about RBI and SEBI but also for phase 2 because this regulator or this new uh, you know account aggregator model industry which is going to be set up as per recommendation of Nandan Nilekani. So Nandan Nilekani is the founder or the brainchild behind setting up this new industry it's not a company it's a new industry and sehmati is going to act as a self regulator for this industry coming under rbi's purview okay now what is the purpose of this let me ex explain it to you very briefly because i believe this goes beyond the name sehmati sehmati is just the new account aggregator model industry head or the uh, self-regulator which is going to be created by RBI. Now the purpose of this is very simple. You are an individual okay and tomorrow let's say this is a bank and you want to take a loan from bank. So you wish to take a loan from bank. The bank says that uh, you want to take a loan from us, you provide us certain details for example PAN card for example your account details let's say financial statement of last three years your income tax details uh, maybe income tax returns and let's say your Aadhaar card okay so the bank says we need all these uh, along with your civil score in order to identify whether we should be giving you this loan or not now till now all these data all these financial statements all these uh, you know forms are provided by the individual either uh, manually either manually by going to the bank or digitally through emails or whatsapp which is very unsafe which is very unsafe and therefore Nandan Nilegani said or he thought let's create an industry out of it so that digitally these uh, 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 these uh, uh, papers these requirements can be provided to banks uh, through uh, uh, you know an entity through an organization which uh, professionally carries out this activity earns money out of it and ensures that the data being transferred from the individual to the bank is not stolen and is not misused digitally or non-digitally okay so the purpose is to create an institution between the bank and the individual and this institution is going to help the individual transfer this data digitally to the bank. It's going to of course charge money from the bank, not the customer because the bank needs people to come and take loans from it. So uh, bank is going to be the, uh, the organization paying this in new institution, but it's going to help create a new industry out of nothing. And of course, it's solving a problem. So the answer to this question is very obviously Sehmati. Sehmati is the 
answer to this question. Let's come to the third question. I hope you have understood the entire concept of Sehmati. The third question is who heads the group of ministers on Me Too after its reconstitution? Now, what is this Me Too? Now, Me Too campaign you must be aware about and Me Too was, uh, a, 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 you know, a, a group of ministers came together and constituted a committee called as Me Too wherein they would be talking about how to improve the condition of women and, and how to reduce or prevent sexual harassment of women at workplace. And this Me Too committee would include the law minister, the home minister and all the women ministers of the parliament. Now this Me Too was deconstituted or uh, you know made dormant uh, very recently but uh, with the uh, all the protest it was reconstituted again and uh, the head will be the home minister who now is Amit Shah. So that's a very simple question and a very simple answer. I wanted you to understand what exactly is Me Too. The next question I believe a very important question as it is no need to provide any additional information here. What is the name of the new campaign launched by Central Board of Direct Taxes to help taxpayers in e-filing their returns and other tax related obligations? To help in e-filing their returns a new campaign has been launched by CBDT and the name of the campaign is A. Kardata e sahayog abhyan kardata e sahayog abhyan nothing else uh, i could find important related to this question let's jump directly to the next one another factual question with which institute has universities uk international part partnered to launch the uk eii eri mobility program study in india now the full form of uk uh, eri UK India Education and Research Initiative. That is something that is important. And uh, UK Universities as well as British Council India. So the answer is A. British Council India and UK Universities have partnered in this in order to ensure or to promote India for short term programs of students for students studying in higher educational institutions in the UK. So it wants to provide studying flexibility, studying opportunities for students of UK higher educational institutions who want to come and study in India on short term basis. The purpose is simple to provide more exposure to UK international students and to provide more money and more exposure and you know more popularity to universities in India as well. So that's the primary purpose. Let's come to the next question for today. Which institute has developed the Care for You app for elderly people? A very simple question and the, these kinds of questions are regularly asked in the examination. So beware. Okay, if you're not covering these kind of questions, do cover these kind of questions. As per my experience, they have been asked in the exam examination regularly. Okay, the institute, the name of the institute is IIT Kharagpur C. And uh, it's a very advanced and a very nice app that they've developed. Now, let me tell you a little bit about the app and then we'll move forward. So what uh, care for you app is going to do is, let's say an elderly person is moving around and uh, he has a phone and the phone has an app, which is care for you. Now, as soon as he falls, the app will recognize that the person has suddenly fallen and the app will automatically on its own send an emergency uh, call to the person who has been listed on the app as the emergency contact. At the same time, as soon as the fallen person takes out the phone from his or her pocket, the app will take a picture of the surrounding as well as the pic picture of that person, whoever is in the view through the camera, automatically will take a picture, automatically will, uh, uh, will measure the mood or the emotions of the per person to identify how uh, grave the danger is and send that data to the emergency contact as well in a simplified manner so as to tell to the emergency contact how severe the situation might be okay so it's a very nice very advanced uh, beautiful app that has been developed by iit kharagpur okay so that is important that you needed to understood and i told you this story this entire idea so that you remember it. It's easier to remember when you have a background on these things. 
where is the headquarters of commonwealth of nations commonwealth of nations headquarters the answer to this question is london well for all those students who don't know what commonwealth of nations is i think it's a sad thing that has happened in the world commonwealth of nations has been created now it was created after uh, in the 20th century uh, in the in the first half of 20th century and the idea of commonwealth of nations is that uh, all those colonial entities of uh, the british empire uh, which be became independent to come together and create a commonwealth of nations now first of all you ruled these countries uh, as your colonies and uh, looted these countries and after they became independent you wanted to create Uh, a commonwealth of these countries and become a part of it yourself i think that's very sad and that's something that should be abolished uh, the reasoning that has been given by british empire is that all these countries which were colonized uh, over a period of time they had something in common let's say english language or uh, certain history certain culture certain shared values of democracy because uh, even if in a bad way the british empire did introduce democracy in a certain way uh, so all those things giving the reasoning that because of all those things the, these nations have something in common and therefore let's create a commonwealth of nations comprising of these 53 nations but i think there should not be anything like this because all these colonies already have uh, you know a sad past uh, a very Uh, historically grave past and if you uh, build up upon it by creating another institution or organization should not be done okay so let's come to the next question i hope now you will remember the headquarters of commonwealth of nations are in london now that you have some perspective on it that was the idea the eighth question where is the headquarters of amnesty international now the purpose of amnesty international is simple it was created in 1961 it's an ngo and the purpose is to focus upon human rights and to ensure that human rights are not violated to uh, as much extent as possible the headquarters are in london england so the answer is d the headquarters of icj another static question icj uh, if you don't know was established in uh, 1945 and pcij is the predecessor permanent court of international justice which was a part of league of nations uh, league of nations was uh, succeeded by united nations and permanent court of international justice was succeeded by icj so you have uh, number 1 league of nations succeeded by united nations and then you have pcij permanent court of international justice succeeded by icj international court of justice in 1945 the purpose of international court of justice is simple to settle international legal disputes and to provide advisory or legal uh, opinion uh, to an issue which has been referred to it by the united nation okay uh, now where is the headquarter of international court of justice it's in the hague netherlands netherlands i think it's very simple to remember because one of the very few institutions which have an headquarter there okay so that was about icj now last question and i'm going to provide you a good set set of information uh, about amravati here which you might not be aware about the question is where is the amravati dam located if you know this answer please provide it to me in the comment section below don't forget about it let me tell you a little interesting things about amravati now amravati has three connotations three kinds of amravatis in india number one it's a city in maharashtra the name is the same amravati the uh, the capital of andhra pradesh new capital of andhra pradesh is also amravati and it is spelled as amravati so there's an extra a here that's the only difference capital of andhra pradesh being developed amravati and the third is amravati dam which is located on amravati river which is in this state you have to tell me the state i'm not going to tell you the answer of this one if you know uh, tell it to me if you don't uh, search for it google it and you will get the answer okay 
so these are the interesting things that i wanted to discuss about in this particular session of morning tales if you like this session like it subscribe to the channel share it with your friends do not forget to share it with your friends who are also preparing for either rbsab or similar examinations where these kinds of questions are regularly asked okay all the very best we will meet very soon take care